So we got uh, 35 seconds to go now for the first start of the Veneto 31.7 training. Um, we got about eight or nine knots of breeze and uh, the tide is setting to lure it a little bit. 20 seconds to go now. Almost everybody's going to be late for the start. There's nobody's going to be within two boat lengths of the line at the start. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seconds. So the blue boat is 6 seconds and she was the first boat to the line. Let's recall it lads, 2 guns. General recall. Say it on the radio. General recall. General recall. Over. Ah, uh, here we go, here we go. 35 seconds now, guys. This is second start, 30 seconds to go of the 31.7 race training course. So we've now got some good stuff happening here. Desiree is coming into windward. They look as if they're okay, but Desiree is going to be a little bit early. That's good. 15 seconds to go. This is much better now, lads. Desiree is going to be early. Desiree, you're over! Desiree, you're over! Desiree, call them on the radio, Aaron. Magic is over. 5, 4, Magic, 3, 2, 1, done. <laughs> okay, give it a general. General recall, general recall. Come on back, give you another start. We can roll it. Uh, no, no, we'll give them a, a three minute gun now coming up pretty soon. They've got, uh, they've got a little bit from, you know, evenly down the line to either that yeah. end or this end. Yeah. There's no safe just underneath the pack. Alright, Aaron. Okay, guys, much better start. We had a bunch of boats over at the windward end. Desiree was over at six seconds to go. Magic was over at four seconds to go and a few others. So that's getting much better now, lads. So let's get the next start nailed and uh, we can get away. Over. 13, 10 seconds to go, Aaron. Tell them on the radio. 10 seconds in three minutes. Uh, 40 seconds here now. This is the third start. And we have a slight increase in breeze, about 9 or 10 knots. And the tide is easing. So the tide is relatively 30 slack. 30 seconds. 30 seconds to go now. We've got fiddly bits, right, jibing out. Very dangerous to do. 25 seconds to go to be jibing out. Avalon's looking good there now. There are two boat lengths behind the line. And then we have, who's that? Attitude looking real good for a nice start. Attitude looking real good here. They should just come up. Their bowman is calling them up. Let's go, Attitude. Let's go, Attitude. Up you come to the line. Four, three, three two, two, one. one. And we leave that one go. Avalon just needed to sheet their jib in. We're racing. Yeah. We're well, racing there, guys. So. Great start there from Magic. And nice start there from Kernock out of the winner end of the line. Oh, 
hold on tighter. It's too loose for going upwind. Yeah, you get some video of them just with the out hauls. Yeah, yeah. That's much better now, lads. And let's sheet the jib tighter. Let's get the jib in tight about maybe four inches off the bottom spreaders. And that's better. Now you'll point higher. That's good. And maybe leave the jib car back just a small bit to flatten out the base of the jib. Guys, this side. Leave the jib. Leave it back a bit. The bottom of the sail is got. All right, okay. Okay, and now sheet the jib in. You're bidding over here? Yeah. Now sheet it in. Go on, sheet it in. All the way, let's keep it coming. Sheet the jib in till it's touching the shrouds and harder. Keep it going. Sheet it harder. That's better. Okay, that's good. Probably a little bit too far back now. Alright, Aaron, that's good. Wind it into the spreaders now, lads. What? Wind it into the spreaders. That's it, good. Get it back today then if you're overpowered, uh, Joe. Happy days. Let's get the pole up, lads. Video the mirror. Got it, yeah, I got it. Now, okay, get the set on these fellas here. It's an odd one too. I sold him that sale to me, lads. I need to get him a fucking decent main sale now and be happy out. It's, uh, you're on tape, you're worse. Jim, Jim's too easy. Jim is too easy there, here. Yeah. It's getting critical to the underneath the jib. Hold back now, and the jib needs to come down immediately. Pull back, ease the sheet. Sheet strapped still. Ease the sheet, pull needs to come. Pull back! That's better. Look for the mark! Yeah. I'll tape, Rory. This way at the same point. Alright, that's six lengths almost from the mark and the kite still hasn't gone up. Popped open quite nicely. Jim needs to come down much, much quicker. That's a that's a almost ten or eleven ball length. So. Yeah. Jim needs to come down much quicker, lads. Yeah. And some shoots coming up here behind now. GBR 66R. That was a nice set. Yeah. But jibs in general need to come down much quicker. So the spinnakers, when they're about five feet from the top, somebody in the boat needs to blow the jib halyard. So the jib is on its way down before the spinnaker gets to the top of the rig almost. But they also, they need to have the jib while they're properly. Yeah, exactly. Figure eight flight. Some good hoists here at the back of the fleet actually, so... See if, if it's GBR 7317, Aaron, yeah. the jib had dropped earlier. That'd be it. The spinnaker would have popped open earlier. The, they have the barber hole around here. Yeah, the tweaker's okay. Okay, let's go down to the river mark. Actually, FRA 19224 on nice the first boat to jibe, and that's been a good call because I'd say they're going to lay straight down on the port jibe. So they're going to gain a lot of boats here, as we talked about last night. Pull up! Pull up, lads! Come on! That pull her in. Okay, just let's go down to the leeward mark now, lads. The orange mark is your left hand mark.
you zoom in on the Marin? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm in a bit more on the top. Steering yeah. be a little wider, wider and closer. Yeah. And they also need more bodies on the rail coming out of the lured mark. You only need the main sheet trimmer with his legs in, the helmsman with his legs in, and the jib trimmer winding in, and maybe the bowman tidying up. Sure, yeah. Everybody else. Right, guys, I want you to run the lured mark and immediately tack as soon as you're clear, and then you're done, okay? Oh. Oh, I want you to do one tack and then you're finished. One tack and you're finished, lads, after the mark. Let's get these mark runners here now, Aaron. 104 one, they're going to be late, very late with the drop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a bit undermanned. Oh, lads. Ideally, now they wouldn't tack at the left, they got my to nice, bite there. My nice, my nice light medium one. IRL 2970 is way too late getting the jib up. Miles too late getting the jib up. If anything guys, an early drop always pays on these boats. A late drop never pays. Let's get the main in lads, come on, let's get the main in. Jeff needs to be up as well. Um, for later for later reference, uh, you should have your preset mark on the jib. A bit of marker or something, just so you can pull it up to yeah. Where you had it at the windward mark, particularly for that leg. So it was a good starting point. Did it be better it's gonna, it's it's gonna have to be back every time, every time. See, they've got single sheets and guys, so they're going to do four hatch drops. What I would really like is have a little retrieval like this. Single sheets and guys. All it takes is a spin lock and a short piece of line. Yeah. So here we are now coming up to the uh, fourth start in the 31-7 training. Um, things are looking good here. Got some boats just coming up here to windward and that's Attitude with 15 seconds to go. Think she's going to be early. Think she's going to be early. Reverse a bit, Richie. Attitude, you're going to be early. 10 seconds, you're early. Hold her there. Attitude is over. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Attitude, you're early. IRL 1565, come back. IRL 1565, you're over. IRL 1565, you're over. So lots of boats setting up pretty late, 35 seconds to go guys. Everybody needs to get a big move on here because it's a long way to go. And this boat here, IRL 1041, IRL 1041, you're looking great there for a port tack start. Let's get up to the line, IRL 141, let's go. You got 15 seconds, IRL 1041. Don't be early, that's all, don't be early. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All, all clear, guys, all clear. I think there was a little, a little bit of a collision there, I think. That's much better! What? Come back, Richie. Back away at boat length. Right, so we could probably sheet the jib just a little bit harder here. 
It's still about a foot away from the spreaders, so we can just probably sheet it in a little bit. And boom is just below the centre line, which is okay in this pressure. That's actually fine. We got one person in off the rail, and we've got the handle which has been left in the winch to lure it. So you never leave the handle in the winch when you're sailing along. And let's watch them tacking. Right, the boat is tacked far too quickly. And the jib needs to come in miles quicker. Back, drop back a small bit, Richie. Pat, I want you to turn the boat half the speed. You're pushing it far too quickly. Much slower tack on the tiller. Hike it out, lads. Upper body's out. <laughs> Let's hike it out, lads. I only see one person on the rail. On the centre line, Richie. On the centre line. Drop back on the centre line. Let's sheet the jib in, guys. It's miles too loose. Need to be into the spreaders. You'll be comfortably clear of that boat on starboard if you sheet the jib in. You'll be fine. Keep going. Slow down now. Slow down. My right, jib is just a little bit too tight there. It's just touching the top spreaders um, and it's just off the bottom spreaders. But it's probably just a little bit on the tight side on the top. That's pretty good. Main boom is on the center line, so that's nice. That's pretty good there now. So we'll just, let's have a look at them tacking. And slow tack in the tiller. Slow tack. Slow, 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 slow. No jib, no handle in the winch before the tack. So they can't winch it in. You have to have the handle in the winch before the tack starts. So we have the blue 317 on starboard, and then we've got magic here on port. Magic. If they tack, yes, they'll clear the blue boat behind them. Let's tack, Roger! And this blue boat here, dangerous position to me to come into the top mark and port on the ley line, but uh, they've tacked and they're clear of Avalon coming in here, so that's okay. Now, what we're seeing here, guys, is a lot of boats coming up to the windward mark with nobody on the rail. But there's no legs over the side, and you've got people here sitting to lure it on the bow when they don't need to be up. They can actually still sit on the rail. No legs over the side. All these guys need to have everybody on the rail except for the bow person and whoever's easing the jib for the bearway. That's the only people that need to come in. Okay, nice hoist on a, a Bluefin 2. The jib needs to come down a lot quicker. There we go. The jib, the jib drops quicker, the spinnaker fills quicker. It's as simple as that. So nice trim here on a, with the guys here. They were one of the first boats to jibe onto port. So they actually may well have taken the lead. Let's go forward a little bit, Richie. The question is that here's the mark and there's a boat to lure it of them. So what the guys here need to do on 5, 6, 15, 65 is try and get an inside overlap by the time they actually get to the lured mark. Looking at that mainsail trim here, the kicker looks very tight. The leech of the mainsail is pretty straight and I'd prefer just a little bit more twist to open the top of the leech of the mainsail. So the guys now have gained an inside overlap on, uh, on the guys on the outside, so they look pretty comfortable to get down to this uh, this mark in, uh, in in pretty good shape. So going for a nice early hoist. So we're hoisting about 10 boat lengths from the mark, if not more. I would always advise to hoist with eight lengths to the mark. There is no advantage to be gained from a late drop, contrary to popular belief. So inside boat is now about six lengths from the mark. 
I would advise that they should drop the spinnaker very soon. Outside boats very late getting the jib up. They've got a problem with their jib halyard. And this is exactly what I mean by late drops. If you've got any problem at all, it won't happen for you. Okay, jib spinnaker very late on that lead boat. Okay, it is coming down now. Now they need to get the jib in as tight as they can. Round around the back here now, around the back. Slowly, Richie, slowly. Close, close. That's it, nice tight rounding. The jib is in, very good. Now they need to drop the pole. That's it, two good drops there. And the jib is in here. And here comes uh, Magic. And coming around the lured mark. And in they come into the lured mark. It's good rounding there in Magic. So they got back into third at the uh, at the bottom mark. You got to do one tack, lads. Here now the grey boat probably has an overlap at the two boat length circle, and uh, they've got water on Avalon and on DA Zire and on FRA 1924. So I don't know. I think this is Aoife M. She's rounded very tight, so they've got a tight approach and a bit of a wide exit. So. In the gap, Desiree! In the gap, Desiree! In the gap, Desiree! Thirty seconds to go. So fiddly bits is going for the lured end. At least they'll have a nice start with nice clear air. And Av uh, who's this uh, IRL 1041? It's Avalon, 15 seconds to go. On the line, Richie, please. Right, 10 seconds to go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, gun. All clear, guys, keep going. Good start, guys, this is getting better. Kernock 10 seconds after the gun crossing the line. IRL 1565, about 15 seconds. And Magic about 20 seconds after the gun. This is the name and shame. Need to get the, need to bear away after the start a lot more, Desiree. Let's go up behind Desiree. Traveller up guys! Traveller up! Come on! Pull the traveller up! That's it! That's better! Not too close Richie, not too close. That's, uh, that's good trim there now lads. Boom just slightly below the centre line because there's a bit of heel. And the jib is just about 6 inches from the spreaders. So that's good as well. Just go to Lured Ritchie a little bit. And you can see that the, the, the jib is sheeted tight uh, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, the, to the shrouds. And uh, that's pretty nice. Just back back a little bit now. Back away a little bit. Let's take this tack. Okay, now when you're certain you're on the ley line, which the guys look as if they definitely are, that's the time to put the pole up. About, you know, four lengths from the mark, something like that. Okay, now the time is to pull the pole back. Pull the pole back, guys. Pull the pole back, and the jib halyard should be going down right now. Jib halyard should be going down much quicker. As soon as the jib comes down, the spinnaker will fill. Let's see what the guys here. Desiree, got a good hoist there, pull back guys, pull back, pull back and then jib down and it'll pop open. Once the jib, look, jib comes down, spinnaker pops open. Beautiful.
and they get a nice low course after the, after the mark as well. Desiree's got both the reef lines in completely unnecessarily. Should get rid of both of them. Hold back, Desiree! Now here we have extreme reality. Pole isn't up, so you need to pull up well before the mark, guys. So then we can do a nice hoist. And here comes a nice hoist here. Pull back, pull back, get the guy back. The guy's got to be back much quicker. Much quicker with the guy back. Guy back much quicker and then jib down and it'll pop. And then bear away onto a run. Okay, Magic just managed to break the overlap in time, I think. Yeah. And 5317 has got water on on uh, Avalon, yeah. Alright, and they're going to do a nice wide rounding and then come in nice and tight. No water, Desiree! They have no water, Desiree have no water, Desiree have no water, Desiree have no water. Desiree had absolutely no room on Avalon there to put their boat in there. That's not, not on. Fiddly Bits has to keep clear of Carnock. Fiddly Bits has to keep clear. Fiddly Bits, you have to keep clear of Carnock, your winner at boat. Hold it here now, on the line. 25 seconds here to go. Nice work here now. And John Sugar's in, uh, I think that's uh, attitude, it's looking good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, it's gone. Attitude, you're over! Magic, you're over! Attitude and magic, you're over! Attitude and magic, you're over, you must go back. So the guys now in Avalon are just slipping into dirty air of the boat ahead of them. A very tricky position for them to be in. But I don't know if they can tack. But they got two boats here on their windward hip. So it's a bit of a tricky one for them. Now, boat on their bow is just tacked away. So that means that Avalon now can accelerate again. And uh, that's Tigger that has just tacked onto port. So Avalon here now is just going to sail really well so that they can, when they tap, they can clear these two boats on their hip. See the outhaul there is way too loose, there's far too much belly in the bottom of the sail. And obviously this leech line here is not good. Oh, they've just fixed it now, great. See here is the winnered mark guys, and you can see all these boats more or less have overlaid. So we need to talk about tactically, about ley lines to the winnered mark, how you judge them, and especially when you're coming in back down the fleet. So who's that now? They've just about cleared, and it's actually legal to tack in there if the boats on starboard have overlaid the mark and you don't make them alter course, alter course by tacking. So that's another rule situation that we'll talk about. Good here now on IRL six 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 two, and um, they've got the pole up nicely, so that's all pretty good. Let's just follow them slowly now, Richie. Let's follow these guys. And uh, just go down to lure it a little bit, Richie. You can see that the guys on uh, Avalon have actually jibed, so they've jibed set. And I wonder, will they almost lay the mark on port jibe on the way down? Interesting. Okay. Bit of a slow hoist here behind us. And the jib needs to come down much, much quicker. Here are the guys on Avalon. They've actually jibed immediately at the top mark and they're almost laying down to the lured mark. The lead boat's over here and they've realised what Avalon has done behind them. 
and they've just jived onto port now as well. Ease the sheet now if the boat heels over. Oh! Looks like a spinnaker halyard shackle is gone or something. Now we've moved the line a little bit and I would expect that the bias is going to be to the port end. So we have some boats that have spotted it and some boats haven't. 25 seconds to go. This is a... Uh, we've got a uh, Tigger down there on the leeward end. We've got Attitude chasing down as well. Just going as fast as they can. 15 seconds to go. And the boat lured is Desiree. And she's going to have our... I know the blue boat's going to have a cracking start here, I think. Yeah, five, four, three, two, one, go! Beautiful start there from the blue boat. Really, really nice start. Um, fiddly bits almost had a perfect start, but they just let the jib flap or something like that. I'm not sure. Slow down here. He's dipping them. Right, when you're dipping guys, you got to ease the main and ease the jib so that the boat accelerates through the dip. And then trim on again now, that's good. Desiree leading this race here now, which is probably going to be our last race, our second last race. Going a bit too far, miles too far, miles too far. We have way too much distance away there. And they're being chased in here by Magic. At the mark now, they need to tack. Turn! That's it. And they are clear, yes. You gotta go behind them, lads. better hoist now guys and the pole is back spinnaker setting jib is coming down excellent excellent that way a little bit richie and you see magic have hoisted before the mark but their jib is too eased but they've got it setting that's good good recovery nice job and then we've here the uh gray boat uh 7130 uh, they've got a problem with the spinnaker, I think, and obviously we've got a bit of a twist up here and Magic set and then the question is How soon do they need to jibe to get to the lured mark? Pole didn't, the guy didn't come back here enough, so it's taking a long time for that spinnaker to fill You've Got to pull the guy back and then the spinnaker will pop open the spinnaker and the jib has got to come down an awful lot quicker And there she goes Point up, Extreme Reality, turn left! That's fine, Richie. What's interesting here, guys, is that you don't need the pole to go downwind. So when you're running, you can sail along just fine with the spinnaker filling. You don't lose anything. So if you've got a problem, you can just Hold the spinnaker nice and straightforward. I can see some boats have double sheets and guys, some boats have singles. So certainly if you've got double sheets and guys, you should be doing uh, four hatch drops. That's a pretty nice spinnaker trim there now on uh, the guys with the tweakers down. You can see here they got the tweaker just below the upper lifeline. That's quite nice and square running in the lighter stuff. And then when it's fully breezy, you tweak it right down to the deck. Okay, so you got your top batten here guys and it's just about the end of it parallel to the boom. Right, the main halyard might be a little bit too tight actually here. You see some vertical wrinkles down behind the luff. So interesting situation here now in that Tigger is inside magic and uh, They have an overlap and they're maintaining their overlap right now. And they've just taken Magic's breeze, so Tigger now will start to go ahead a little bit. And that's where Magic need to bear away to get out from under their dirty air. 
Take it real wide now, David. Real wide. Real wide. Drop the kite, lads. They've left it too late to drop the kite. If you're going to round outside, you have to have the kite out of the way so at least you have some chance of, um, of slowing down, getting wide, and then rounding on Tigger's, uh, Tigger's transom. Slow, slow, Richie, slow. That's it. That's actually good sailing there now on Magic's behalf. Oh, oh, oh. They just overcooked it and they've ended up in, uh, in Tigger's dirty air, I'm afraid. Five three one seven has had to uh, bail out. Go on, Nigel! Come on, girl! Uh, go ahead, Kevin. Over. Um, I had the mic up, or I just didn't know what I um, the marks are still in the water, Kevin, so we will go and lift both of the marks over. Alright, smile. Which one are you looking at? 7317? Is that? Oh yeah, I see, yeah. So basically we got a tide flooding to windward, about 30 seconds to go. So everybody here is to windward of the ley line into the committee boat. We've got Magic here is probably going to be pinned out with the boat to lured of them. Yes, for sure Magic is pinned out. Reverse there, Rory, so I can just see the other side. And there are going to be a lot of boats over there. IRL 6662, 1565 is over, 7317 is over. So we've got a uh, vast majority of the fleet were over. So good decision by the race officer. Um, just 30 something is uh, mainsail is about. Five inches. Yeah, I was going to say about 100 millimeters over the black band, and uh, that's actually illegal. <coughs> so, we're just having a chat about this start here on the rib, and with the current strongly pushing it to windward, where that blue 317 is, is actually not a bad spot to be with maybe 40 seconds to go, something like that, and you tack in there and then you're basically going to almost lay the committee boat with that tide pushing you strongly to windward and means that everybody to windward of you has got to stay out. So what we have here again is a similar start. The tide is flowing strongly to windward and we've got the vast majority of the fleet here are still reaching in from the windward end of the line. That's a very dangerous position to be in because it's difficult enough to get in from to windward of the ley line to the committee boat when there's no tide, but when the tide is pushing it to windward, it's uh, impossible. See, IRL 1752 are actually not too bad. They're about, going to be about a third of the way down the line, nice and safe. S 6909 are probably pretty reasonable there as well. The problem with uh, 7317 is that magic is to lured. Magic is looking pretty good there, IRL 2004. 30 seconds now. So 7317 is going to get, uh, she should start accelerating right now, 7317. 7317 should start accelerating, she should trim in right now. Let's just reverse back upwind a bit, Rory. Okay, this is good, I think there's a boat down there to lured. 
2474 is going for a really nice start. Not unless you fire an individual recall. of the jib touches the spreader before the actual bottom of the jib comes into the spreader. And we have the boom on the center line and nice twist profile there. You can see these bubbles coming off the transom. So if we're going to put some weight to leeward, you need to put it to leeward and forward. Right now there's enough breeze probably to have everybody on the rail if the boat's uh, being set up properly. Need to get the jib much quicker here. Close reach out of the tack, ease the main sheet. Keep the traveller up though and then sheet both sheets on. I don't see the main sheet being eased after the tack and I don't see it being trimmed on after the tack. You can see here even after the tack, Attitude's head sail is still way, way too far out. It's about two feet from the bottom spreaders, especially in this nice... So you can see guys, boats coming down the run on starboard and Magic coming up on the, uh, up to the top mark on port. She's got a port tack approach here, which it's going to be fairly risky, but all these guys here on the starboard ley line have overlaid by miles, especially when you consider that the tide is pushing them to windward. So it's okay to tack in there if you tack and uh, complete your tack to lure to the boats that have overlaid without, without making them alter course. Yeah. No foul there. Yeah. Jib sheet has been eased a little bit too much on uh, Bluefin 2. The jib is still flapping. And Magic. Basically, as soon as they came around the mark, they should have just hoisted the spinnaker and sort out the pole afterwards. Got to get the guy back, got to get the guy back much quicker. The guy's got to come back. Much better to sneak the guy a little bit before the hoist. So it can set. Jib must come down immediately. Yeah. And this actually isn't a bad approach here, except that there's nobody on the windward side of the boat, everybody's sitting in. So you can see that the guy has been sneaked back and the tack of the spinnaker is near the end of the pole. All right, and they're hoisting straight away now. We just have to pull the guy a little bit and the jib halyard should be gone now. Jib halyard should go, sheet the kite on. That's actually not a bad set. Jib is a little bit slow coming down, but it's not, not too bad. And then we got DZ Ray, very, very slow on the spinnaker guy. Spinnaker guy must come back a lot quicker. And you also should never hoist the spinnaker on a close reach. Because it'll just go out the back of the boat and it'll be very difficult to control. Actually, yes. You're right. Desiree has got a spinnaker halyard led to the masthead, which is um, <laughs> certainly not what everybody else has. Here are the guys on attitude. You can
can see that the uh, the kicker is a little bit too loose and that the leech, the mainsail, is spilling open. The top batten is actually twisted open at the top and it's not parallel to the boom. So just a little bit too much twist on the main but the spinnaker trim looks pretty good. Here we have the out all miles too loose on this boat and the mainsail hasn't been eased at all. It's a pretty good trim and magic. Inboard end of the pole could come up just a little bit and maybe pole aft a little bit because the spinnaker sheet seems to be eased out quite a lot. Another body board, okay. But the uh, mainsail leech looks about right. The uh, top batten of the main looks okay. This is a, I don't know if this is a jibe mark with the course that they've got or if it's just a bear away or what, but it looks as if here the guys on Avalon are getting ready to jibe. Really important if you're going to jibe guys, as the boat turns away from the wind, you've got to square the pole back, pull the right hand sheet on and leave the left hand one go. That's nearly good. That's not too bad. Once they keep it setting now, that's not the worst. It's fine. That's good actually guys. That's just fine. Boat behind has got to rotate the spinnaker around or else it will not fill on the new side of the boat. So the problem is that they didn't pull the right hand sheet on and the left hand sheet off quick enough. You should be able to keep the spinnaker perfectly setting throughout the entire jibe. But look how much speed that they've lost and Avalon is shooting off into the distance in the lead. And here we have, um, I don't know who this is. Let's go up nice and close, Rory. And Spinnaker setting right hand sheet on, please. Right hand sheet on. Right hand sheet must come on. Okay, managed to keep it setting. So we got Levante here running inside Aoife M. Square the pole Levante, square the pole, rotate that spinnaker around, Take, pull the right hand one on and Aoife M can come high and roll over the top of them and take advantage of the boat ahead which has got a problem with their spinnaker. So the boat behind had a perfect opportunity to pass there and didn't take it. So who is this now? beautiful north spinnaker obviously got to rotate that spinnaker or else it's going to fill the wrong side of the forestay right hand sheet must come on much quicker and then they're going to turn the boat pole forward because the next leg looks like a bit of a reach and same goes for here right hand sheet on left hand sheet off right hand sheet on left hand sheet off oh this that's magic they pull the right hand one on that's good Spinnaker's rotated right around and and whatever you do guys you've got to be able to hold that spinnaker sheet in even if it's not the pole isn't sorted you've got to try and get the spinnaker sheet in there's Adele giving it holly on the foredeck And she did now, and, and David, you must spare away to give the crew a chance to actually get the spinnaker under control. There's no point in reaching up, because it's going to be even more difficult for them to get it sorted. Bear away and let them get sorted. Okay. Oh, look, here they go. Um, so what we have is two people on the bow here. So spinnaker needs to be rotated around, that's good. And then we have to turn the boat and flip the main sheet through. Un it's much better to actually unhook the pole off the mast and then unhook the pole off the old spinnaker guy so that the pole isn't on either of them in the middle of the jibe. Pole's too far back now. So the critical bit of information here that the tacticians need to give is that the next this leg is going to be a tight reach, so you should never need to pull the pole back very far after the jibe, and the trimmers need to know that. So, 
here we have Avalon dropping their spinnaker at about three and a half boat lengths to the mark. Um, that's just about in time, I would say, for these uh, for these guys just to get the spinnaker in. Remember, when you drop the spinnaker, you must throw off the spinnaker guy as well. In close to the mark, Rory. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. That's okay. And the spinnaker guy never came off here, so you can see what a late drop has now done in that there's been a problem and they've come around the mark with the mainsail not in and the spinnaker still halfway up the rig. The guys in Tigger here have got it down nice and early, jib is a bit over trimmed before the mark and they've rounded the mark now nice and tight, hopefully, and uh, nice and neat. And they just need the weight on the rail now immediately and they can get going up this beat. Yeah, and now we have, uh, who's this now? Spinker still coming down, and really what we should have, guys, is weight on the rail as we're coming around that mark. Only one person on the rail, there should only be the jib trimmer, trimming the jib in, the helmsman and the main sheet trimmer, the only people who shouldn't have their legs over the side, and maybe the bowman doing a bit of tidying up. And again, here we have the jib over trimmed before the mark. So really what you should have is the jib sheet handed up to a person on the windward rail and the jib trimmer just winding the jib in nice and slow as the boat goes around the mark. All right. And here comes Pat and the lads on Aoife M. And they haven't had such a good rounding in that they've rounded in dirty air. So uh, you can see that they've, they've borne away a little bit and they probably now have clear air so they should trim the jib in now a lot because it's a lot looser and wind her up and get her back up on the breeze. Here we go. So Magic here is, is going wide, which is exactly what you need to do when you're steering around the lured mark behind the boat ahead. You need to go super wide so you can come in narrow and round exactly on the boat ahead of you's transom. The boat here going around the mark now has, has approached it way too narrow and they're going to leave a little gap at the mark. There might be, there might not be, but Magic I think should be able to get in there and Magic has gone for the gap, and that's very good. Oh, and she's pinching. Magic has got a little bit more speed, and this, and Magic has, just has to bear away now and accelerate. The boat to Leward has not got their jib in yet, which means that they haven't got the speed that they need coming out of the Leward mark. So Magic's very critical here now, cannot afford to slow down, and it's definitely not the time to leave the jib out on Magic when you're trying to get over the top of somebody. And uh, here come the guys on attitude. Bit of a dodgy spinnaker drop, I'm afraid. Um, so most important thing now is just to get settled and uh, get after the guys up there. Here's a classic example to these boats here, and all the 317s have none of them have sailed a straight line between the first jibe mark and this lured mark. You can see the lured mark is here in the camera and then the the, uh, the previous mark that they came from is... I'm trying to catch it in the camera. Where is it rel relative to the ship? It's just left of the ship. And you can see the red spinnaker and the blue and white spinnaker there are miles to windward of that line. So it means that they'll have to come down low and slow towards the end of this reach. And here we go. Another two boats just rounding the mark here and a little bit late on the jib and a little bit late on the spinnaker the spinnaker and pinching after the mark is definitely not good not when you want to keep the speed on and keep your momentum on now guys should just drop the spinnaker right now no advantage whatsoever to being holding the spinnaker up get the spinnaker down and what we need to talk about in the debrief are four hatch drops because I'm certain that a four hatch drop has got to be a good way to go on boats like this Jib halyard is a little bit too loose as well. And this is another thing too, if you have bagged the inside for a mark rounding, and 
once you're sure that the boat outside you is not going to try and get inside you, well, then you might want to consider dropping the spinnaker a little bit earlier. And the lured boat here is doing what we call a letterbox drop, which is basically where you take the lazy lured sheet and you take it in underneath the foot of the mainsail and it goes straight in the hatch. But they've actually ended up rounding to lured and outside the uh, Extreme Reality guys ahead of them. So uh, the problem as well as that letterbox stuff is that it does an awful lot of tidying up to do afterwards. I think we need to talk about four hatch drops. Here we have, uh, I'm not sure which boat this is, but the, you can see the wrinkles coming out the loft of the jib. I'm not saying it's an actually a bad thing, but they're probably just slightly excessive for these sort of wind conditions. Um, and you can see the top camber stripe here is probably quite full. So maybe they want to tighten the jib handle a little. Proper hiking, excellent! That's the first hiking I've seen all day! <laughs> so you can see the guys here properly hiking, touching their toes, upper bodies out over the side of the boat. And even with five of them on the boat, it's going to make a huge difference. So, because they're quite overpowered here, you can see the fore stay is not very straight. So that means that the head sail is going to be quite full and it means that they're not going to be able to point. So what they should really do is tighten the jib halyard for a start and also they should pull on a little bit more back stay to straighten the fore stay and then pull on the main sheet and so the entire system of both sails just flattens out because right now the sails are too full for the amount of uh, weight that's on the boat. See here on Kernock, the jib is way, 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 way too far out. There's about three or four feet between the leech of the jib and the uh, bottom spreader. And you can see that when you get a gust, you got to push the tiller so that the boat doesn't have too much heel on it and keep the boat on our feet. So here we can see on Bluefin, there's still plenty of depth in the mainsail, but if you look at where their backstay is, they've actually run out of travel on their backstay and they can't pull it on anymore. So if there's any more wind than this, they're going to be in big trouble because they've got too much power in the rig and they can't take the power out of the mainsail by pulling the backstay on. Get the leech line! The leech line of the main! Main boom on the centre line. Bottom of the main sail is quite flat. The um, top of the main sail is just twisting open nicely and the jib is sheeted to within about six inches of the spreaders. You can probably sheet the jib a little bit harder, but we're right up at the top of the uh, wind speed of this light medium one, I'd say. And um, just don't want to make it too hooked at the back. So you can see here Levante going downwind without any lure tweaker on, which means that the clue of the spinnaker is much too high up in the air. We also have the, uh, the leech of the main cell is too open and too twisted, which means the kicker is uh, a little bit too loose. So, nice medium air, sort of 12 knots of breeze, 10, 12 knots of breeze. Nice bit of windward heel is good. So they have the lure tweakers on to the top of the lifelines, which is quite good. Maybe a little bit tighter if it got any windier. And the kicker is a bit loose. Tighten the kicker! Tighten the kicker! Uh, that's it, just to straighten the leech of the mainsail just a little bit. That's good. Nice slow turn. Jiving is all about slow turn. Keeping the spinnaker full, pulling the pole back as you go into the jive. Pole has gone too far forward. This is not good. This is definitely not the way it should be done. We're going to go through this tomorrow. 
You should unhook the pole off the old side. They should jibe right now. They're still on starboard and 30 something, they've lost the opportunity. The lured shrouds here in Bluefin 2, even the cap shrouds are wobbling around the place, even in this uh, this light day.